You can see the big giant carp statue in there. Yeah. That's neat. And they got the fans to keep it cool. Yeah. Move the air around. Well, it's, it's humidified. It's a greenhouse. Yeah. It's a, so instead of the big apple, they got the big cherry. Yep. One of the icons of the city. Is it really? Yep. You'd almost consider this kind of functional because a lot of the two side beams actually climb up and slide down. Yeah. Huh. One thing I do like about Minneapolis is that there's an abundance of public parks. Yes. All throughout the city. I'm a big fan of parks. There's an empty suit over there. Sculpture garden. Yeah. Oh, Without words, and I have no words for it. Just make a good handball court. What's that? Make a good handball court. A little rough edges, though. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll show you this. Oh. It's a nice little spot to come for a little walk and a cup of coffee. Yeah. <clears throat> See, there's no signs forbidding people to climb these. They look like they're built to climb. And a lot of the stuff is, is used interactively. <clears throat> that museum, it's a modern art museum called the Walker Art Center. Oh.
All right, cool. <laughs> the rabbit? Yeah. There's some interesting pieces up here. Kind of on this side, everything's scattered out and they're bigger. On this side, they're more sculptures and yeah. condensed. Yeah, I can see. It's cool. That's one lean bunny. Big swing. Wounded Amazon. He's a little more than just wounded. He's missing his uppermost part. Oh, that's interesting. is strangling the vulture. It's about time. I want my liver back. <laughs> it's like a mini Stonehenge. That's what I've always liked quite a bit. There's little sayings on every one of them. That's cool. We should do this clockwise, maybe. Let's see. Oh, this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you should limit the number of times you act against your nature, like sleeping with people you hate. It's interesting to test your capabilities for a while, but too much will cause damage. Boy, I know that one. The smallest thing can make somebody sexually unappealing. <laughs> a misplaced mole or a particular hair pattern can do it. There's no reason for this, but it's just as well. <sighs> Somebody's a little finicky. When you're on the verge of determining what you don't like, someone uh, that you don't like someone, it's Awful when he smiles and his teeth look absolutely even and false. This makes you hate him more. Little Queenie. Any number of adolescent girls lie face down on the bed and work on energy, housing, labor, justice, education, transportation, agriculture, and balance of trade. It's a little bit of dadaism or something, I guess. I don't know. The nice thing I like around is that they're all completely random. Yeah. More than once I've awakened with tears running down my cheeks. I have had to think whether I was crying or whether it was involuntary, like drooling. <laughs> Gifted children, those with an IQ of 125 or above are prone to feelings of alienation, frustration, and boredom. These feelings can culminate in violence if the children are not encouraged and challenged. That's, that's probably true. I wouldn't know. I don't have an IQ like that. Uh, 
there is a period when it is clear that you have gone wrong, but you continue. Sometimes there is a luxurious amount of time before anything bad happens. And the moral to that is, well, that that happens. It does be a moral to a lot of these. <laughs> yeah. It happens, that's the moral. It can be startling to see someone's breath, let alone the breathing of a crowd. You usually don't believe that people extend that far. That is probably true. There is the sensation of a lot of flesh when every single hair stands up. This happens when you are cold and naked, aroused or simply terrified. Yes. There is no reason to sleep curled up and bent. It is not comfortable. But I keep doing it. Um, it's not good for you, and it doesn't protect you from danger if you're worried about an attack. You should stay awake or sleep lightly with limbs unfurled for action. I'm going to try to start that. I'm going to take that advice. Are you worried about an imminent attack at night? No. It's just an OCD thing, I guess. Um, it takes a while before you can step over inert bodies and go ahead with what you were trying to do. It takes some time. The mouth is interesting because it's one of those places where the dry outside moves toward the slippery inside. That's interesting. Some days you wake and immediately start to worry. Yes. Nothing in particular is wrong. It's just the suspicion that forces are aligning quietly and there will be trouble. I get like that. You can watch people align themselves when trouble is in the air. Some prefer to be close to those at the top and others want to be close to those at the bottom. It's a question of who frightens them more and whom they want to be like. This is true. Oh, sorry about that little fella. It's a little chipmunk. That's a, I've never seen that kind. Oh, well, pretty often. Ah. I think it'll be all right. When you've been someplace for a while, you acquire the ability to be practically invisible. It's uh, This lets you operate with a minimum of interference. Just like that little chipmunk there until I came around. You can make yourself enter somewhere uh, frightening if you believe you'll profit from it. The natural response is to flee, but people don't act that way anymore. What a shock when they tell you it won't hurt and you almost turn inside out when they begin. Yeah. There are places that are um, scarred and the skin is pulped around like the navel or the head of the penis that leave you thinking that the body is fragile. That's true. If things were a little different, you would digest yourself through a cut in your mouth. It's a relief to know that there are provisions against this. They're thinking things that never occurred to me and they're probably going to mess me up now. <laughs> One thing I like about the, the sayings is that they're all random. Yeah. It's almost obscure. Confucian, in a sense. More people will be building hiding places in their homes, small refuges that are undetectable except by sophisticated devices. We are almost done. 
Even with your eyes closed, you can see someone approaching. His shadow shows on the insides of your eyelids. And that's a good thing. They can't sneak up on you. The rich knifing wait, the rich knifing victim can flip and feel like the aggressor if he thinks about privilege. He also can find the cut symbolic or prophetic. <laughs> Hands-on socialization promotes happy interpersonal relations. The desire for and the dependence upon founding ensure uh, fondling ensure repeated attempts to obtain caress and the willingness to reciprocate. Yes, I love it when that happens. It's an odd feeling when you trigger instinctive behavior like nursing. In someone, it's funny to be in his presence, while a different part of the nervous system takes over and his eyes get strange. Well, I mean, why do eyes have nipples anyway, I guess? Uh, don't, I don't know. By your response to danger, it is easy to tell how you have lived and what has been done to you um, to show whether you want to stay alive, whether you think you deserve to, and whether you believe it's any good to act. All right, we've almost done it. After dark, it is a relief to see a girl walking towards or behind you. Uh, then you are much less likely to be assaulted. Affluent college-bound students face the real prospect of downward mobility. Feelings of entitlement clash with the awareness of imminent scarcity. There is resentment at growing up at the end of what uh, end of an era of plenty, coupled with the reassessment of conventional measures of success. I feel like I just got a little smarter. Anyway, that is our mini Stonehenge in the statue garden, statue park. We do have time. It's not okay. Like we're short, but it's kind of funny. I'm rushing you so we don't have to feel rushed. Yeah. That's fine. Let's see if that comes out. It's so dark against this dark background. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Goddess with the golden thighs. And that's there she is. I gotta see what that is. Yeah. That's neat. A driftwood horse. It's a metal driftwood horse. It's metal? Yep. Oh, no kidding. It looks like... That's, that's why they call it They art. fooled me. That's easy to do. Uh, we're too early for this. Ah, well. Another time, perhaps. Yep. That is neat though. Yeah. It's uh, sort of a larval or shrimp like. Oh, it's a giant plant. carp. It's a giant carp. I see it now. Awesome. It's Minneapolis Sculpture Garden. That was, that's neat. I like to see this as one of the things, you know, one of the main things I do recommend about Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. One of the many. I just find it interesting when you go, they got different breeds of squirrels and chipmunks, and they're, they're the same, but they're different because they're isolated. So it's a flat pack in the garden. This is 
cool. This is sort of the info area. We have books. With a modern kind of theme to it. I dig it. Yes.